Just this month, we witnessed the arrest and detention of Fisayo Soyombo, the veteran journalist who uncovers you know, corrupt activities in government. Uh, he was working on the activities of illegal bunkers in the Niger Delta. And not only was he arrested, his cover was blown by the military, who he had confided in that this was what he was doing. His cover was blown to the oil bunkers. Uh, evidence from preliminary investigation by him you know, suffices to show that the Navy and the Army are complicit in escorting uh, vessels that still crude oil. We have been saying this for years now, that crude oil theft is not possible without collusion of state actors. You know, uh, just recently, uh, Tom Polo himself said that the Navy is complicit, you know, and our, con our country and our economy is battling and struggling. It's important that we holistically, uh, the, especially the government of President Wala well, Tinubu, you know, commit to fighting crude oil theft in the country, and that journalists like Fisayo must be protected at all costs to do their job to expose corruption and to do reporting as they so fit without any form of harassment. Uh, many of us are keenly looking forward to uh, the revelations of the ongoing investigation by Fisayo Soimbo, despite the fact that his investigation has been jeopardized by the military. Um, uh, us in this, um, on our end, we had written a petition against crude oil theft in the country several months ago, especially early this year. But up to today, nothing has been done. Series of complaints has been filed against key officers of the Nigerian Navy. You know, petitions have been filed against them. Nothing has been done in terms of investigating uh, the corrupt activities and collusion on the part of the Navy. You know, the reason why people lobby to go to the Niger Delta, especially the Creeks, is because they want to be involved in uh, the lucrative uh, oil bunkering and theft in that region. That we will not need to go to China, we will not need to go to France, we will not need to go to Brazil, we will not need to go to the IMF to borrow money if we are able to prevent crude oil theft in our country. Mm -hmm. That the president and key stakeholders must commit to preventing crude oil theft. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the other issue that we are here for is the arrest and detention of Dele Faro Timi. Uh, Dele Faro Timi, a lawyer and a rights activist and also a political activist in the country, was abducted in Lagos in his office on the instruction uh, of the Nigerian police after our revered father and leader in the legal profession had petitioned uh, that Dele Farotemi in his book defamed him. Well, it is unfortunate and regrettable that our revered father and leader in the profession will resort to using the police to harass, intimidate, and arrest a fellow lawyer, uh, someone who is speaking up against the ills in society, that if Baba Arefa failed the fame, that the ordinary thing that one would have expected him to do is to have go use civil remedies, you know, to sue the liberal timi, that when people who have condemned institutional uh, abuse of institutional power in the past, like Baba, now resort to doing the same, it is most unfortunate. Uh, that we call on the critical stakeholders, especially in the police, that the police must stop acting as errand boys to big men, influential people, politicians. You know, that uh, it also points to the fact that uh, one of our clients, uh, Speed Darlington, popularly called Akwi, has been in custody now for over a week for allegedly defaming and insulting Bonner Boy. You know, things like this are clear abuse of power and abuse of office simpliciter that the whole world has moved away from criminal defamation. These are colonial laws, you know, that Nigeria must move away. The idea of abducting Dele Farotimi from Lagos and taking him to the turf of Baba Arep uh, Balola in Ekiti in itself is suspicious. Why was uh, Dele Farotimi not arraigned in Lagos? where he resides and does business. Why was the raid on his office? Why was it so violent? Why were 
lawyers threatened by the police that they will be shot, as viewed on the interview on New Central. Why was the receptionist slapped and other violations of the fundamental right of lawyers and non-lawyers alike who were in the firm the day of the arrest? And why this the show of force? The police officers who are going all over the place, who are being mobilized uh, from state to state to arrest people, are needed in Zamfara. There's a new terrorist group called Lakurawa or something like that. The police officers are needed. It is because of the idleness of the police and other security agencies, that's why insecurity festers in the country. That the time, the resources used to fight ego wars on behalf of powerful, influential, and wealthy citizens, that those resources, taxpayers' money, should not be used in ego wars, you know, and in, plus, uh, in pleasing people who feel defamed that taxpayers' money should be used to fight bandits, to fight insecurity, to arrest dangerous criminals who have committed crimes such as murder, armed robbery, theft, rape, kidnapping. That that is what the security agency should focus on. I, I'm therefore making a passionate appeal that these incessant arrests by security agencies, especially the police, that they will continue to make the human rights index rating of Nigeria to be extremely very bad. That the president of Nigeria should should make an executive, you should give an executive order restraining the police from getting involved in civil disputes, such as deformation, landed matters, rent and tenancy issues, that the inspector general of police himself should commit, even without the president giving the executive order, that the inspector general of police should issue a clear directive to all officers that taxpayers' money should be saved and that they should focus on fighting crime that civil issues are not crime per se, and that they should focus simplicity on issues around crime and crime prevention. That in doing so, the Nigerian police and other security agencies like the DSS will have the trust and respect of all Nigerians at home and abroad, and that this will improve the human rights rating of the country. And finally, once again, we are here to talk about issues around the opposition. That we, ha we, have, we, we currently have a bad and a weakened opposition in the country. That it's unfortunate and regrettable that as of today, there appears to be non-existence of the opposition political party. That a situation where key issues, key decisions of government are not being challenged at all by the opposition uh, political parties, that it sends the message that the opposition is completely in bed with the government in power. I have said this time and time again that the only way Nigeria will progress if, is if we have a viral and a credible opposition. That the beauty of democracy, what strengthens democracy and the tenets of democracy is when the opposition is, is up and doing and it's alive to its responsibility. That what we currently have in the PDP and the Labour Party are a compromised opposition. I have even heard that some people in the opposition are planning to sue me. That is what I've just heard, that they are planning to sue me because I have told them that they are not a credible opposition and that they are not doing the work of opposition. The remarks that they are angry about, metaphorically speaking, as to them being a tea-serving and a kilishi-serving opposition uh, party. Yes, the idea is that opposition must be fierce, Opposition must challenge, opposition must confront the government in power. If my remarks, which comes very strongly about my perception and my, uh, and, and my resolve about providing credible, credible opposition to the government, if this remark is too hard a pill for the opposition to swallow, then it is most unfortunate and regrettable. For me, on my path, I remain committed to putting key actors in government on their toes, and I charge the entire opposition in the country to do the same. That the opposition is on trial. The opposition is on trial because the opposition is failing in its constitutional responsibility of holding government at all levels accountable. That the government in power borrows loan from time to time, and that there is no resistance in the National Assembly, either by the PDP Labour Party or NMPP. 
that the opposition, the current opposition in the country is sleeping. To the PDP national chairman and the, the PDP national secretary, who have uh, said that my remarks about tea serving and kilishi serving is defamatory. What is defamatory in asking you to be a credible opposition? And, and if I focus, if anybody focuses now on attacking the opposition, uh, they, you, before I'm accused or alleged of working with the APC government or trying to demoralize opposition, all I have asked is that you people should hold the government accountable. Anybody still attacking OB, anybody still attacking Atiku at this point, or still attacking leadership of the opposition political parties, will also be complicit. The allegations that we have alleged them to be working for the government in power will also be guilty of same. The idea right now is that the APC government, the Bola Ahmed Tinubu government, should be seen as the common enemy. Everyone should be pointing accusing fingers at them. So I don't want to go on, on a tantrum with them to say, oh, sue, we will not sue. I don't want to be part of the, the, the destruction. Therefore, I withdraw the tea serving and the Kilishi serving remark and so that peace can reign. But if, if they still want trouble, I am ready and available perpetually in this regard.